They say that in space, no one can hear you scream, but in the small town of Mill River, no one can even hear you speak. Bryn here isn't a woman of many words. She's a woman of action. What kind of action? Alien slaying, baby. And you wouldn't think so by looking at her, but she's got the skills that would make a space marine proud. These Martians showed up looking for an easy target, but they're about to get more than they bargained for when they run into Earth's fiercest warrior. And by the time that she's done with them, they're going to wish they'd kept their mothership back in whatever cluster they crawled out from. Fire up your phaser and get ready for a probing good time, because we're here to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the evil ETs in No One Will Save You. <laughs> This girl is about to have a terrifying encounter that's completely out of this world. We open on the isolated countryside home of Bryn Adams, a very quiet girl, who dresses like a 1950s housewife even though it's the year 2023. She lives alone after the death of her mother and, for some reason, doesn't seem too popular with the folks around town. Like a lot of people nowadays, her social anxiety has gotten so bad that she needs to practice interacting with other human beings in the mirror before she goes out of the house, but luckily, that won't be a problem for very long. Bryn spends her days working from home as a seamstress. That's a person who sews clothes for those of us living in the 21st century, and in her free time likes to work on a model village, imagining what it would be like to live in her own little perfect world. For now, though, she'll have to brave the horrors of society once again as she sets out on a quest to ship one of her packages. As she leaves, she notices a strange circular patch of dead grass in her front yard, a sign of things to come, one might say, but she thinks nothing of it and throws some water on the spot before heading into town. After dropping off the package while looking over her shoulder like she was driving a fully loaded Brinks truck through Gotham City, she returns home to whip up a candlelit dinner for one while writing an apology letter to her former best friend, Maud, while catching a little wine buzz to top off the evening. Why has their friendship ended, you ask? Well, it turns out that they hit a rocky patch. But that's not important right now, because by tomorrow morning, Bryn's life and this whole town will never be the same again. Night falls, and not a creature is stirring, but Bryn isn't alone. It looks like something has been rummaging through her garbage bins. A hungry family of trash pandas, perhaps? Unfortunately not, because the last time that she checked, trash pandas don't cut your power or pick the locks on your front door. Uh-oh, it looks like we've got a home invasion. Stopping dead on her way down the stairs, she listens as the creature scuttles around the first floor of the house, moving quickly as if it's searching for something or someone. Better act fast. Bryn starts to make a stealthy retreat back up the stairs, nearly making it to safety when she's foiled by every cat burglar's worst enemy, a squeaky floorboard. The jig is up, and she's forced to make a break for it as the creature sprints up the staircase after her, quietly slipping back into her room just in time. As she carefully shuts the door, we get our first real glimpse at her uninvited house guest in the form of a round, hairless gray head bobbing its way up to the second floor. Before we get too deep into the video, I wanted to break in and give a shout out to our friends over at Zbiotics. After long days of helping people survive some of the most perilous situations known to man, I like to kick my feet up and enjoy an adult beverage or two, or three. Unfortunately, my body often disagrees with me the next morning, and that's where Zbiotics, a game-changing product, is there to help. So I'm going to cover the mistakes people make, what you should do, and how to beat a rude awakening after a night on the town using Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic, the world's first genetically engineered probiotic, was developed in a lab deep underground to beat rough mornings after drinking. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme that breaks this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Last night's drinks are no match when it comes to all the horrifying creatures I'll be confronted with the next day. 
Pair your candy and cocktails with Zbiotics. Use the link in the description with code HOWTOBEAT at checkout for 15% off of your first order. Shout out to Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode, and now, back to the show. Okay, Houston, we have a problem. As a young woman living alone out in the countryside, any unexpected visitors stopping by in the middle of the night would be a major reason to worry. But clearly, this is way worse than your average intruder. Without getting a better look at it, there's no way to tell exactly what this creature is just yet. However, if we're going by the otherworldly noises that this thing is making, <coughs> plus its unnaturally long fingers and large gray head, then it's a safe bet that Bryn here has just encountered some kind of extraterrestrial species. This is already horrifying, and to make matters even worse, she has no way to tell what its intentions, motivations, abilities, or weaknesses may be, leaving her with no reliable way to decide how to safely approach the situation. In the best case scenario, E.T. here could be harmless, and hopefully just lost and confused. But unfortunately, all of the evidence that we have so far seems to indicate the contrary. Logically speaking, if it had come in peace, then why would it wait until nightfall, break into the house, and come sprinting after her in the most menacing way possible, instead of civilly making its presence known and approaching her in a less threatening manner? Sure, you could chalk it up to nothing more than poor social skills and miscommunication, but I wouldn't be willing to bet my life on it. I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but based on these behaviors, as well as the strange markings in the front yard from earlier that day, we can reasonably assume that this thing is most likely not friendly, has been watching her for at least several hours so it knows that she's there, and is probably hunting her down for consumption experimentation, or something in between. So with all things considered, this situation is what we Earthlings like to call not good, and leaves Bryn with essentially three choices for how she might respond. Run, hide, or fight, but which plan should she go with? Let's start by running first. On the positive side, getting the hell out of Dodge if she has the opportunity would hopefully mean the least chance of a direct confrontation. But as of now, it's impossible to know how many more of them could be out there or how skilled they are at hunting and tracking. Plus, since she lives in an isolated place, where exactly would she go once she got out of the house? Since none of the electronics in her house are working from whatever the alien did to them, there's a good chance that her car is also dead, which means that she'd either have to set out into the woods or head for town on foot. Of the two choices, back to town seems like the best place to go, but who's to say that the aliens aren't already there too? It's definitely a gamble, but since since she lives in an isolated farmhouse, there's a chance that the aliens started with the fringes of society before making a move on the more heavily populated areas. So if she is going to run, then running for town might be her best option. Now, when it comes to hiding, this might be the safest choice as long as she's able to conceal herself effectively enough that the aliens can't find her. It could also give her a chance to observe the creature a bit more closely and learn more about it, but the biggest problem with this strategy is that they seem to have been watching the house for at least a full day before making a move, which means that they definitely know that she's in there somewhere. On the bright side, if it knew exactly where she was, then it probably would have come straight for her before she even woke up. But since it didn't, we can figure that its tracking skills are probably similar to that of a human's, unless it's being assisted by some sort of alien technology. For all that we know, tricking this alien could be as simple as moving her mirror into the corner of the room and hiding behind that using a flame to distract it if it hunts based on heat signatures, or picking a really good hiding spot and waiting patiently for it to leave. The problem here is that if hiding doesn't work, then she's basically thrown away her one and only chance to escape and left herself as a sitting duck. Which brings us to her third option, fighting for her life. The best part about taking the fight to the alien first is that it tackles the problem head on 
and ends this whole nightmare early if she wins, but that's a very big if for a number of reasons. First off, as of right now, Bryn here has absolutely no idea what this creature's abilities are, or even if it's possible to physically damage it at all. Also, there's no way to tell how many more could be out there, which means that killing it could just bring the rest of the alien army down on her. And if she gets incredibly unlucky and it turns out that they actually were friendly, taking one out could end up escalating things into a full-blown war of the worlds and spell doom for all of humanity. Without any other knowledge to go off of, it looks like Bryn's best choices here are to run, hide, or fight in that order. I'd start by making a break for town, if it looks safe enough to try, but I'd want to stay off of the roads as much as possible. Get off the road! If there's other aliens out there, then they'll most likely be searching areas where they'd expect humans to be. So it's critical to move carefully, quietly, and stay out of sight until she makes it to town where she can hopefully alert the local police or at least use the rest of the population as meat shields while she figures out a new plan if things in town are already too far gone. Hiding can work if there's no option to run, and the nearby woods or pond look like they could provide some decent concealment, but she'll have to pick a damn good spot if it's going to work out. Fighting, on the other hand, should be her absolute last resort. This will pretty much boil down to finding the best weapon available, like one of those heavy lamps in her bedroom, a curtain rod, or a kitchen knife if she can get her hands on one, using the element of surprise and just hoping for the best. The pressure's officially on, and now it's time to see if Bryn has what it takes to survive. Deciding that her best bet is to hide, Bryn pulls her suitcase out from under her bed, but ends up causing a loud noise that gets the alien's attention once again. The creature immediately comes sprinting for the door, but she quickly hops out of sight, taking cover around the other side just in time, and trying to stay quiet as it begins searching the room. From there, all that she can see is its feet, and if there's one thing that these guys didn't come to Earth for, it's to steal our shoes. Standing on its tippy fingers, the alien bellows out an otherworldly sound into the night, before disappearing through the open window up towards the roof. As soon as she thinks that the coast is clear, Bryn jumps up and quickly shuts the window. She's managed to shake her pursuer for now, but she still isn't safe just yet, and after arming herself with an unplugged curling iron, one of Earth's most formidable weapons, she quietly sneaks back out to shut the front door. Hearing that the alien is still on the roof above, she panics and decides to make a run for it, getting the door locked at the last moment but giving herself away in the process. Suddenly, all of the electronics in her house are flipped on at the same time, forcing her to scramble around and unplug whatever she can. Despite the commotion, the alien still hasn't shown back up, so Bryn seizes her opportunity to get to the phone and call for help. It's a good try, but if she'd paid attention to the name of the movie, then she would have known that it was a waste of time. And unfortunately, it was also her biggest mistake. Instead of getting through to the police, she immediately gets her eardrum blown out by loud alien feedback, and the kitchen door violently slams shut as everything around her starts to shake from its telekinetic field. Bryn panics and makes a break for the stairs, but the alien is already there to cut her off forcing her to duck back into the kitchen and hide behind the counter. After politely hanging up the phone for her, the alien notices Bryn's reflection in the kitchen window and quickly opens the refrigerator door, trapping her there against the wall. With nowhere left to run, she watches as it slowly extends its longer fingers over the top of the door, waiting until just the right moment before shoving as hard as she can and sending it crashing to the ground with a scream. Well, Two can play at this game, thinks E.T., and as she runs for her life, it uses its telekinesis to slam her with the whole front door of her house, dropping her flat and probably causing a little bit of brain damage. But she's about to return the favor. Desperate to escape, she starts to crawl for the safety of the living room, only to be grabbed and dragged back into the hall by the alien's mind powers. At the last second, she manages to grab the broken off bell tower from her model town. She holds up her arm and drives the sharp piece of wood straight through the side of its weirdly shaped head. The alien's just as shocked as she is, staring at Bryn in disbelief before collapsing to the floor, stone dead. It's an upset that nobody saw coming. Okay, well, 
that's one way to get it done. Brynn's won the battle for now, but if she's going to win the war, then she better take what she's just learned about these creatures and use it to her advantage in the next fight. Now that we've finally gotten a good look at it, we can see that the alien must belong to a species of extraterrestrial that are most commonly known as greys. You've probably heard about the fabled Roswell Incident, one of the most infamous UFO encounters in modern history. Of course, it turned out to be nothing but a crashed military balloon, if you believe the official story. But it looks like Bryn here just ran into one of the same guys that the Air Force told us all not to worry about. As the name suggests, greys are a group of small, gray-skinned humanoids who travel to planet Earth in their flying saucers from somewhere beyond the stars. What they lack in stature, they make up for in an insatiable desire to abduct unsuspecting humans for their otherworldly experiments. So if you notice the local cattle herd running thinner than usual, or strange glyphs appearing in the cornfields, watch out, because you might be in for a close encounter of your own. Hopefully you'll never find one banging around in your kitchen in the dead of night like Bryn just did, but she's about to realize that this was no isolated incident. It's the start of a full-blown invasion. This particular space invader wasn't as uh, vertically challenged as we usually see, but those long limbs and his weirdly shaped head and eyes look like great potential weak points to target in the next fight, if she can manage to land a shot, that is. You see, during the fight, we also saw some important new behaviors from the creature that helps to clear up some of its goals and motivations. Since the alien didn't just immediately tear her to shreds, but also wasn't slamming her with the front door, we can now reasonably determine that they are definitely not friendly, but also seem to want Bryn alive for some unknown reason. Also, it was clearly communicating with something from her bedroom window which unfortunately confirms that there are definitely more of them out there. From what we can tell, they seem to hunt mostly by sound and sight, meaning that staying quiet and hiding will work to keep them off of your trail, at least for a little while. These aliens have a major strength that we'll need to watch out for in the form of their telekinesis abilities, which makes fighting them head on all but impossible. On top of that, they can also manipulate electronic devices and are extremely fast and agile. So overall, they're more than a match for a human one-on-one. -on -one. The good news is that they're not very physically strong as shown by how easily Bryn pushed him with the refrigerator, and best of all, can be killed through good old fashioned violence if you're lucky enough to get a hit. So with all that being said, what should Bryn do next? Well, it's pretty much a guarantee that more of them are going to come looking for that body. So first, she should either get rid of it as quickly as possible or just abandon the house completely. Personally, as crazy as it's going to sound, I would go into town, tell the police what had happened, and let them send a car out there to figure things out. Who knows, the government might even put me into some kind of alien witness protection program if I'm lucky, or at least hit me with the uh, neuralizer so that I could forget what I saw and go back to living my life in peace. While in town, I'd also try to stop at the local hardware or sporting goods stores and arm myself with anything that I could. Ranged weapons like a gun or crossbow would be best, but it'd still be necessary to use the element of surprise in any upcoming fights. That way, the next alien won't just block the attack with its telekinesis. It's a bit of a long shot, but covering myself with a Mylar space blanket might help to somewhat reduce the effectiveness of their telekinesis, or at least hide my heat signature, if that's something that they're using to track me. So I'd try to pick up one of those as well. Once I was appropriately supplied, instead of going straight back to the house, I'd plan to hide out in the woods for the night while I waited to see what would happen. Or alternatively, just get the hell out of town and as far away from their dead friend as I could before the others showed up. The best bet is to avoid any more confrontation at all costs. But if the worst case scenario should happen and they catch her again, Bryn could always try using hand signals to communicate with them as a last ditch effort, like how they did in Close Encounters. She's managed to take one down, but it's only a matter of time before more are on their way. By sunrise, Bryn is still sitting on her kitchen floor, completely dumbfounded at what she's just been through. 
After pulling some of the broken glass out of her feet, she staggers over to check on E.T., and luckily, he's still very dead. Unfortunately, the same goes for her phone, lights, and even her car battery, leaving her with no easy way to reach help. It looks like she needs to go back into town again, and so she hops on her trusty bicycle and pedals off down the road. On her way, she comes across a mail truck lying flipped over in the middle of the road, and notices that her closest neighbor's house is also completely trashed, with circular patterns, just like the one in her own yard, scattered all around the property. To make matters even worse, there are no signs of survivors anywhere in sight. It looks like this wasn't an isolated incident, and she's about to discover just how bad things really are. When she finally makes it to town, everyone seems to be going about their day as normal, but she won't find any help here, at the police station. She walks right into Maud's parents, with the woman immediately spitting in her face and leaving without saying a word. This leads Bryn to retreat back outside from the embarrassment, and while she's having a mental breakdown out on the sidewalk, she notices a bus driving by and gets an idea. She's going to leave her troubles behind and skip town for a fresh start, but unfortunately, the aliens have other plans. Not five minutes goes by on the drive before this creepy guy comes up and sits right behind her. Bryn senses the incoming stranger danger and quickly decides Decides to switch seats, but before she can get far, he reaches out and grabs her by the shoulder, pulling her in close and gurgling at her in the alien language. She's already killed one alien today and isn't afraid to do it again, so she grabs him by the neck and shoves the creep away. But it turns out that this bus is full of these things, and they start coming at her across the top of the seats like spider monkeys as she retreats towards the front of the bus. Fortunately for her, the bus driver hasn't been assimilated yet, and he slams on the brakes, giving Bryn a chance to escape. There's nowhere else left to go, and so she hits the road at a dead sprint back towards her home, with her new best friend following behind at a leisurely pace. Okay. As she knows it, and now it looks like the alien invaders aren't the only thing that she has to worry about. She's managed to keep herself alive, but just made a critical mistake in the process. I hate to say it, but Bryn, you f***ed up. She hasn't been assimilated yet, so you might think that she's doing alright, but the truth is that she just missed her one and only chance to alert the authorities before it was too late. Look, I don't care what happened between you and the police chief, this was the moment to put that aside and focus on the more pressing problem. That being the ongoing invasion by an army of body-snatching telekinetic aliens. They seem to be mind-controlling their victims with some sort of parasite, but haven't gotten to everyone quite yet. Which means that they might have gotten ahead of it if she'd alerted more people to what was going on. You don't just need the police, you need every branch of the military to get here yesterday. Scramble the fighter jets, call the men in black, and tell Agent J that the aliens were down here making jokes about his wife. You need as much firepower as possible before things get out of hand, but now it looks like it's already too late. To top it all off, you ran away from town when what you should have done was run back towards it. Sure, the alien-possessed neighbors are probably taking over at this point, but the town was also your best resource for weapons possible transportation out of the area, and of course, a large supply of meat shields. Clearly, they aren't giving up the chase, so going back to the house only gives them more opportunities to catch you alone and defenseless. When you miss your only chance to warn the outside world about the alien invasion, Bryn, you f***. Up. Now it's time to talk about what she should do next. We've all seen that the aliens are possessing people with some sort of parasite in their throat, so it's best to keep the neighbors at a distance for now. It also might help to find a way to cover up her mouth so that the parasite can't get inside, like by wearing a motorcycle helmet or a face mask. The possessed people seem to take a lot of damage, so focusing attacks on their neck and trying to kill the parasite itself 
is going to be her best chance if she ends up having to fight one. In the worst case scenario, if one manages to get inside of her, then Bryn could try killing the parasite by drinking boiling water like Ash in Army of Darkness. Although the medical complications that would surely follow make it best to save this for a last resort. For now, the best thing that Bryn can do is warn who she can while getting as far away as possible before the aliens return. On her way home, Bryn passes by the destroyed house once again, where she sees a group of her neighbors gathered out in the yard. It's probably not the first party in town that she wasn't invited to, but this time, that seems like it might be a good thing. All in unison, they raise their hands towards an incoming storm before turning to stare at Bryn herself and she wisely decides that she better get the hell out of there before it's too late. When she finally makes it back to the house, old E.T. is still laying right where she left him, but not everything has stayed put while she's been away. The creature's mouth is wide open, with a foul-smelling ooze coming from it that forms a slimy trail leading out into her front yard. Bryn follows the trail to a nearby bush, but whatever it was is already long gone, and it looks like it's going to stay a mystery for now. It's already been a hell of a day, but she knows that things are only going to get worse once night falls and that storm hits, which leaves her with only one option. It's time to get ready for war. Using a lighter that she finds in the kitchen, Bryn goes around the house quickly lighting all of the flames that she can. Since the gas and water lines are still working, she fires up the stove and sets four pots full of water to boil, and also grabs a box cutter that she can use to defend herself in a pinch. All that's left now is to batten down the hatches, and although there's not much that she can do about the massive hole where her front door used to be, she nails up a huge quilt over the opening, which should at least provide provide her with some concealment, if nothing else. With that, Bryn's preparations are complete, and not a moment too soon, because in a matter of seconds, an otherworldly beam of light begins to circle the house, searching for any signs of life. The aliens are back, and this time they've brought reinforcements. Okay, Bryn's officially ready to throw down, but let's take a moment to review her strategy and see if we can come up with anything that might work better. First off, she chose to bunker down in the house instead of hiding out somewhere else. The house does provide her with some moderate cover, but it's also the one place that the aliens are guaranteed to search, both to uh, recover their dead friend and find the earthling who killed him. Since she's going to stay, I'd suggest arming herself with any weapon that she's got, like kitchen knives, frying pans, curtain rods, or anything else with good reach and damage potential. She could even use pepper from the kitchen to make herself sneeze on the aliens if they get close, using biological warfare to take them out, War of the Worlds style, if she's lucky. Following that same line of thinking, having pots full of water on standby is a great idea, but maybe it would have been better to not boil it. Boiling water kills bacteria, and there's a chance that the bacteria could have been even more deadly to them than physical injury. If I were going to stay in the house, I'd also choose to take cover in the basement instead of on the main floor. Since there are only two entrances, this limits her options to escape, but also reduces the potential for anything to catch her, and she can easily cover both to see what's coming. Personally though, I would have chosen to hide out in the woods nearby and waited to see if they left after recovering the body. Also, knowing that they're coming back for their friend presents a chance to use the gas stove to blow them all sky high. Once they enter the house, if she could rig up a trap or even better, rig the body itself with explosives and take out the whole mothership once they bring it inside. Unfortunately, Bryn most likely doesn't have the materials or the know-how to come up with something like that on the spot. So for now, she'll have to work with what she's got, and it looks like the fight is about to begin. Now's when the real invasion starts. Remember that impenetrable barrier that Bryn constructed over the missing front door? Well, it lasts for approximately two and a half seconds before a massive beam of blue light sends the quilt and the couch flying to the other side of the room. It's an alien ship, 
and they've come for their fallen comrade. But recovering his body was just the start. Just when it seems like they might have left, another beam of light sweeps through the house, searching for Bryn, and she quickly ducks into the basement, narrowly avoiding a little baby alien that drops in through the front door. Down in the basement, the situation isn't any better. The ship is still searching for her outside, and when she tries to sneak out through the cellar door, she nearly runs into another telekinetic alien, just like the one that she tangoed with the night before. Managing to stay out of sight for now, Bryn waits until the creature has its back turned before grabbing a pair of scissors from the desk nearby and taking cover underneath it. Suddenly, the alien tips over a mannequin, jump scaring the girl into giving away her position, and by the time that she turns around, it's already sitting right behind her. With a wave of its hand, it sends the desk crashing straight into the wall and effortlessly throws away the scissors, leaving Bryn here completely defenseless. All that she has now is a picture of her and Maud that she picked up during the scuffle, but the alien yanks that away too, probably thinking that it was another primitive weapon. Well, lucky for her, it's so surprised to see that she has friends that it actually gets distracted long enough for Bryn to escape back upstairs. Whew, okay, that was a close call. Bryn had the right idea by staying out of sight and waiting for her moment, but since we know that the alien hunts by sound, she missed a chance to use its own strategy against it by throwing something to the other side of the room to get its attention, and then going in for the kill shot. Also, since they're clearly distracted by photos of humans doing human things, she'd be wise to keep that in mind for the next fight and use this new knowledge to her advantage if she has the opportunity. Upstairs, isn't going to be much better, but at least she got away from the telekinetic guy for now. It's out of the frying pan and into the fire for her though, because she's still got the baby alien to contend with. And sure enough, that little freak comes creeping up behind her like it learned how to be sneaky by watching Looney Tunes. The girl spins around just in time to catch it as the alien leaps on top of her and fends it off by chomping on the arm causing it to briefly retreat from the fight. Seeing her chance, she makes a break for the stove, with the creature jumping through the kitchen after her and manages to hit it with three of the pots of boiling water before accidentally slipping on the wet floor, fumbling what could have been the killing blow. With the alien circling her in, Bryn's forced to retreat into the hallway, only to have her weapon pinned to the wall by a sudden burst from the ship's tractor beam. Terrified, she backs around a corner and makes for the safety of another room as the creature starts swinging across the wall after her, crawling its way through the door just as she slams it shut. In a desperate attempt to escape, she throws open the window and almost makes it out, but the alien grabs her by the ankle at the last moment and drags her back in Inside. If there's one thing that they should know by now, it's that Bryn isn't going down without a fight, and she manages to kick it away before grabbing a nearby mop to defend herself. She's ready to wipe the floor with this extraterrestrial scum, but it must have been watching kung fu movies while it was studying up on humanity before the invasion, and chops that in half like Bruce Lee. This backfires for the alien though, because now Bryn's armed with the only thing more dangerous than a mop, a sharp wooden stick. She charges forward with a warrior's shout, spearing Marvin the Martian here straight through the shoulder and pinning him to the cabinet before slamming the door on its head. Whether it's dead or just knocked out, this seems to have done the trick, and Bryn quickly jumps through the window out into the yard. Just then, another fully grown alien appears on top of her shed. This one's the most terrifying yet, standing as tall as a house with long spider-like limbs. Bryn sprints for her life with the creature quickly closing in behind her, but luckily it gets tangled in her clothesline, buying her time to escape. As strong as the clothesline may be though, it can't hold back a giant spider alien for very long. And just as she's about to duck back into the house, it shows up on the rooftop directly above her. The creature stands up, bellowing out a signal to its friends, and she can hear more aliens responding from out in the darkness, meaning that reinforcements are probably on the way. On the bright side, it seems like this thing hasn't quite gotten used to Earth's gravity just yet, because it stumbles and falls off of the roof, giving Bryn another chance to run. Thinking quickly, she dives into her car and out the other side. Instead of just stepping over it or throwing the whole thing out of its way, this big idiot decides to follow 
follow her straight through and manages to get itself helplessly stuck. As it flails around trying to escape, the alien ends up smashing its hand right through the car's gas tank, and that's when Bryn remembers the lighter that she's been holding onto for just this sort of occasion. She lights the trail of gasoline and runs to safety just as the whole car explodes in a ball of flames, roasting this arachnid ET like marshmallows over a campfire. Somehow, she's still alive. There isn't much time to admire her success though, because within moments, the alien ship returns. Fortunately, the aliens still haven't developed a beam that moves as fast as a human can run, and so she manages to make it to the safety of her bedroom just in time. Okay, well, that sure escalated quickly. She's handling these aliens pretty damn well so far, but was going back into the house the right idea? On the one hand, there could be more of those big guys out in the forest, and it seemed like the place was definitely surrounded when it signaled to its friends. But on the other side, since it called out for help, this is now where every alien with an earshot is going to be showing up very soon. To make matters worse, that telekinetic alien is still somewhere inside, so what's better to do here? Square off with him and his powers, or take your chances out in the unknown? Personally, I would have chosen the unknown and tried to hide out in the forest before even more started showing up. That way, I'd stand a chance of avoiding any more confrontation, at least for a while, as opposed to going right back inside where you know that the aliens are coming and one very powerful alien is already searching for you. Of course, there's always the option of quickly sabotaging the kitchen stove, using it to blow the telekinetic alien back to outer space, and possibly fooling the others into thinking that you died in the explosion too. That's a bit of a long shot for me though, and right now I'd rather try to run and hide than stay and fight, especially when there's so many more on the way. After losing track of their target, the aliens are forced to send in the ground team once again with one of the telekinetic variety slowly entering just behind her. As the alien scours the room, it once again gets so distracted by pictures of her former friendship that it briefly lets its guard down, giving her a chance to strike. Bryn lunges towards it, wielding a participation trophy, but the alien can sense her coming and uses its powers to throw her whole body straight through the damn wall. Injured, she staggers to her feet and takes shelter in another room, with the alien following following close behind. Suddenly, a burst of red light floods the room, rendering Bryn unable to move as she's lifted up to the ceiling. She's helpless to fight back and can only watch as the alien slowly levitates up until they're both face to face, stopping a few feet from her and coughing up a strange ball of flesh and tentacles from the back of its throat. It's assimilation time and there's nothing that Bryn can do to stop it as the alien forces her mouth open with its mind control, making her swallow the thing whole. Suddenly, Bryn wakes up back in her bedroom screaming bloody murder, but when she looks around, it looks like the whole invasion was nothing but a nightmare. Her battle scars are healed, but the house is put back together and she can even hear the sounds of other people outside peacefully enjoying the sunny day. Downstairs, she collapses with joy as a familiar shape appears at the end of the hall. It's her best friend Maud, now alive and well, and the two can finally have the reunion that she's been so desperate for all of these years. Or or can they? No, even Bryn can tell that this is too good to be true. Forcing her hand into her mouth, she yanks the tentacled blob out of there and wakes up right back in her front yard. The blob scuttles away, and within moments the ship appears again, bathing it in a beam of yellow light and forming a new body for it that's an exact clone of Bryn herself. Bryn's so distracted by the sight that she doesn't even notice as the clone stabs her in the stomach with a sharp piece of wood until it's already too late. But when it pulls her in for the kill shot, she quickly quickly pulls the box cutter out of her pocket and slices it through the side of the neck, killing it on the spot. Okay, just when you think that they're out of tricks, these aliens come up with something even more bizarre to throw at you. She's putting up a good fight, but can't go on for much longer, so what should Bryn do now? First off, the minute that she pulled that tentacle blob out of her mouth, I would have thrown that thing on the ground and stomped it out before it ever had the chance to wriggle away. Now, with all of those UFOs around, there's no way that she could possibly kill every alien, so the way that I see it, she's got 
one of two options to choose from, and unfortunately, neither one is ideal. Since the aliens really seem to care about the little parasite creatures, I might try cutting that thing out of the clone's neck and holding on to it this time, possibly using it as a bargaining chip to keep them from killing me. Alternatively, and this one's a real long shot, but now that it's dead, she could try mimicking the clone's behaviors and tricking them into thinking that she is the clone. At least long enough for the aliens to move on and for Bryn to find some way to get to safety if there's still anyone left on the planet who isn't under alien control. As it stands, there's nowhere left for her to run and Bryn's about to have her strangest encounter yet. As Bryn stumbles through the woods, a gargantuan alien that's even taller than the trees comes stomping towards her out of the fog. The girl stares at it in disbelief when suddenly the alien tractor beam surrounds her and lifts her straight up into the sky. They finally caught her, but this abduction isn't going to go the way that you might expect. The next thing that she knows, she's in the middle of the alien ship inside of an empty, pitch-dark dome with a layer of water covering the floor. The aliens surround her, reaching out their long fingers towards her head, and the instant that they touch her, Bryn blacks out. She wakes up trapped in what appears to be an alien version of the sunken place, where she sees visions of events from her early childhood. It's the day that her friendship ended with Maud, and now we're about to find out why. It turns out what started as a harmless shove between friends became an unexpected tragedy when Bryn retaliated out of anger and struck Maud in the head with a rock. The girl didn't survive, and Bryn is forced to watch as her younger self makes the worst mistake of their lives right in front of her. Suddenly, Bryn and her younger self are seated at a table bathed in a red glow, with the girl writing her first apology letter to her former friend. Older Bryn reaches out a hand, forgiving her younger self, and that's when the aliens decide to pull her out. Maybe this was all some kind of strange alien therapy, or maybe even the aliens didn't want her around after finding out what she'd done. But for whatever the reason may be, the Greys decide to send Bryn falling back down to Earth. She crashes down into the road, slightly the worse for wear, but fortunately still alive and tentacle blob free. In the morning, Bryn wakes up feeling like a new woman. She goes for a nice little bike ride into town, and now that the neighbors are all under alien mind control, they're actually much more pleasant to be around. She gets invited to a party where she's able to show off those dance moves that she's been practicing, and even has a new alien boyfriend to keep her company. And yeah, that's really how it ends. Everyone except for Bryn gets the tentacle blob treatment, and they all live happily ever after under the loving care of their new alien overlords. All things considered, it looks like she made it out all right. So you're just walking around, minding your own business, and all of a sudden, an alien kicks in your door and starts f***ing up your house. What, then, in your right mind, would you do? Let us know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How to Beat playlist for more videos just like this. Also, be sure to check out The Kill Plan, the new show which just launched on the channel. It's awesome. And uh, until next time, have a damn good day.